There have been times where America has shown arrogance and been dismissive, even derisive. The United States is still working through some of our own darker periods in our history. We have at times been disengaged, and at times we've sought to dictate our terms. We have to acknowledge potentially we've made some mistakes. Former presidential candidate, uh, Republican candidate Ted Cruz calling out President Obama saying, you know what, he continued his apology tour during his, during his final speech to the U.N. In advanced economies like my own, unions have been undermined. The United States worked with many nations to curb the excesses of capitalism. Our nation began with a promise of freedom that applied only to the few. In America, there is too much money in politics. Too much entrenched partisanship, too, too little participation by citizens, in part because of a patchwork of laws that makes it harder to vote. We've made our share of mistakes over these last 25 years. With me now to discuss former British Prime Minister advisor for David Cameron, he is Steve Hilton, here in the studio. Uh, you know, Mitt Romney said, I'm never going to apologize to America. Because I believe in America. I mean, should, you know, you never see President Obama making these kinds of put downs of the United States in front of Congress. It's always doing it in front of foreign leaders or overseas, right? Well, because it's easy to be popular by doing that. You can go around the world and beat up on America, and you know that you'll get a good response because that's everyone's favorite activity. But what we've actually seen in the real world is that when America retreats and, and feels embarrassed about its leadership role, it becomes a more frightening and a more chaotic world. And so what we want to see, you saw it today just in the Wall Street Journal, the former Secretary General of NATO, saying when America doesn't assertively lead in the world, that's a problem for everyone. And so the, being embarrassed about American power is not in America's interest, but it's not in the world's interest either. So you're saying this has serious deleterious effects when the president puts down the United States in terms of our leader, the U.S.'s leadership role in the world and for global security. Are you seeing the ramifications there? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, ju just as it's wrong to um, completely condemn America as he's doing, it's also wrong to blame everything on America in terms of the absence of leadership. But there's no doubt that what's going on in the Middle East, particularly in Syria, um, has been made worse by the fact that America has held back from getting involved. And so you see the consequences of that in the refugee crisis, in the increase in terrorism. These things were not caused by America, not by a long way. But America hasn't led strongly enough to try and fight these problems at yeah. their cause. You know, in nearly a dozen times he put down the United States. He said Americans are not civically engaged. You know, he just was in uh, Laos saying Americans are lazy. I mean, they're so lazy, they're paying his, for his salary and for his security detail. Um, but, you know, so what is it that you see in the president that he makes these remarks? Why do you think he's doing this? I think it's a really interesting question because he, he talks often as if he's not actually in a position of power or influence. He's a mere observer of events rather than the person who's occupying the most powerful position in the world. And that's something that other world leaders, I think, often find frustrating. They are looking to America and specifically to the president for leadership, not just analysis. So you think he's coming off like more like a TV pundit? <laughs> a TV pundit, or to be generous, perhaps a professor. You a know, professor. he's a very, yeah. very uh, smart and educated man. But that's, we also need uh, leadership and action, and that's what the world needs right now. Yeah, they don't need the teacher's faculty lounge exactly. outlook when we have, you know, major countries collapsing around the world. And the U.S. is a beacon of hope. President Obama pitching the number, the new, the brand new number, now wanting to accept the U.S. 100,000 refugees Watch this, though. UK Prime Minister Theresa May says, no way, wrong. Listen. Countries have to be able to exercise control over their borders. The failure to do so erodes public confidence, fuels international crime, damages economies, and reduces the resources for those who genuinely need protection. Steve, what do you make of the Prime Minister's comments? I saw that, and I thought, good for her. That is exactly the right argument. We've got to get away from this idea that there's something wrong or unreasonable or racist or xenophobic, all the other insults that get thrown around, for a country to control its borders and decide who it wants to welcome to live amongst its people. That is a perfectly reasonable thing to do, and that's what she's setting out there, and I completely it, agree. And the Prime Minister also, with the common sense that rings like a bell, said, let us be real, let us be honest about this 
quote, refugee crisis. Listen, we are a generous nation. The U.S. is. So is the U.K. So is Germany. So many countries in the European Union are extremely charitable and gener generous. Theresa May called out the world, though, and saying, listen, these are economic migrants looking for a better job. They're not refugees, right? That's a really important point to make, and I'm so glad that she made it. Look, I, like, I completely agree with you. I grew up in the UK, but my parents were refugees from communism in Hungary. I'm very pro-immigration. I'm very pro-countries welcoming, welcoming people into their, to live with them who really need that kind of sanctuary. But the idea that every single person traveling from the Middle East to Europe is in that category is clearly wrong and she's good for her for saying it. Yeah, it's, it's a breath of fresh air and honesty in that debate. Next up, we have London Mayor, Mayor Sadiq Khan. He's teaming up with New York Mayor Bill de Blasio to make a case on why more refugees should be accepted. Now, what do you make of that? I, I read the, the, the thing that they wrote together, and I think with the Mayor of Paris as well. Honestly, it just felt like a political stunt to me. It felt like they were saying, you know, we, are, we are elected, they're all uh, on the left, we run these big cities, and they wanted to make a political point. There wasn't anything in there, I felt, that was really substantive in terms of what they're going to do. And the truth is that in each of those countries, it's not the mayor that determines national immigration policies or vetting or border controls yes. or any of those things. It's not really in their yeah. control. So that is, it felt like more of a stunt. By the way, it's always become somebody else's problem, right, when they make these statements. And, you know, the fact that there's poor vetting, intelligence has said this both here and overseas, it's a problem. Steve, thank you. 